Hey there, my name is Provis and welcome back to the Lamplighters League and the Tower at the End of the World. Back in May of this year, we got to take a very early look at what this game was going to offer, and now that we are getting closer to the release date on October 3rd, Paradox Interactive has sponsored me to show off a bit more, so I'm happy to accept that. Let's jump back into the game, and of course, as always, as you watch this video, if you like what you see and you want to learn more, there will be that link in the description down below. Now, I should say up front that Paradox has specifically requested that I not spoil the story of this game, so we're going to keep the spoilers to a minimum. Because if you watch the first video, you should know that this is a story-driven turn-based tactical adventure. Spoiling the story takes away half of the fun. And if you somehow miss that first video, well then go back and watch it. Seriously, it gives a really good introduction for what the story is going to look like and how the gameplay is going to pan out. In this video, you're going to be seeing a campaign that is already in progress. We're several missions in, we've already completed all the kind of introductory quests, and now we are getting into the game in earnest. And this here is the Lamplighters League hideout with our current assembly of Motley crew and misfits. Some of these agents you're already familiar with, such as Ingrid, Latif, and Eddie. We've also got Celestine over here, an assassin I recently joined into my party. And these four are going out on missions in the world map, trying to stop some different factions from reaching a phenomenal treasure that will change the world. I am, of course, talking about the tower at the end of the world. That's not a spoiler paradox, it's in the name of the dang game. I can't tell you what the tower is or why exactly it matters, that's something you'll have to discover for yourself. But here's what you do need to know. There are three other houses in a faction called the Banished Court that are competing to reach the tower before we can. Whoever gets there first will change the world beyond repair. My goal, simply enough, is to use my band of mercenaries to sabotage the efforts of these three houses, at least until we can figure out a way to get to the tower ourselves. And along the way, there are going to be a handful of missions in which we can accomplish that. For example, I could pull up an Operation Silk Shadow theft type of mission. Doing this will gain me some beautiful rewards. It also will set back the efforts of House Marteau. You may have noticed that over there. It had a little white bar, and it can go back down to zero. Or House Strum. If we go over here to a more difficult mission, an Operation Scorpion Sting, we can set them back, right? And the goal is to just keep them back down as much as you can. If they ever fill up this bar, they win the game and you lose. The tricky part being, whatever mission I do not complete, then the house is going to gain their respective progress. So we're going to have to take a balancing act between these three, regardless of rewards, just to make sure we do not lose the game. In addition to these major operations, we also have some side expeditions that the odd man out in our crew can go and complete while we're working on our main operation. For example, personnel search. I want to find some additional recruits to add into the Lamplighters League. This is going to cost me a resource called Intel, which you do gather by completing leading missions. Let's go ahead and assign Celestine. I know you haven't seen her yet, but we'll keep the other three for our next mission, something you're familiar with, and then we'll introduce her a little bit later. Now, while this mission over here is actually more valuable to House Strum than to Marteau, I'm going to go for this easier mission right here, because I see that there is an optional objective which would get me a bonus resource, some Aetherum, which I'll be able to use to craft better weapons for my characters. There's a whole method of progression for your agents. We'll come back to that later, though. Let's go ahead and jump into the game, and you can get a better idea how this works, and then I'll I'll show you the rest. Operation Silk Shadow is underway! Okay, welcome to the game. So, we can move our three characters around. You've seen this from the first video. We can Wait group them here. up, ungroup them, and so on. Everyone has their own special abilities. And those right there are some of the bad guys, people we need to take down. We need to use the environment to our advantage, try to, uh, let's say, set some kerosene drums on fire, or launch explosives, or sneak attack and stealth kill some of these targets. But if it all comes down to it, we'll just get into a good old-fashioned brawl. Yeah, okay. Looks like there's actually quite a few enemies here. And did I just see a walking skeleton over there? I'm pretty sure I just saw a walking skeleton. Well, that doesn't seem natural. Oh, yep, sure enough. Okay, it's not exactly a skeleton. It's a Lacunar Thrall. Oh, goody, 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 goody. Supernatural monsters. Mm-hmm. You might think what I want to do here is go in guns blazing as aggressively as possible. But no, I really want to stick to the shadows for a minute and kind of... Think about where maybe I can take these guys down. For example, I see an oil barrel right here, and explosives not far away. That makes me think I should try to create a big oil spill here, lure enemies over to this region, then set it on fire by blowing up this area. 
Oh man, here's something really tempting. What if I use Eddie to just go ahead and toss a trap in over here and set this all on fire? Because these guys will get drawn to this thing. They'll be all distracted. Ingrid, I need you real quick. Can you get over here? Because we're about to do something. Please run forward, charge, and take these guys out. Boom, boom! I charge extra. There we go, all right. So these guys are now all burning, but this guy has no idea where I am, and we just took out three enemies, and we still haven't even used the explosive barrel. Oh, that honestly worked way better than I expected it to. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into recon mode and reassess a little bit. So I know there's one target here. I know there's another one up over here, and I think I saw one more of those thralls wandering around. Question, is there... Yes, there is a rope ladder over here. So if we can get Latif in this direction, he can sneak attack this guy and then take the high ground. And we all know that you can't beat whoever has the high ground. So maybe, just maybe, Latif, this is your moment to shine. Can we sneak up there without drawing attention? Well, they're not making it easy. This guy keeps turning around and looking over this direction. I can't see an easy way to get up here, and this guy's got full vision in this area, so I really need this little corridor opened up right here. I'm not sure I'm gonna get it. Okay, um, alternative strategy then. We'll free it up by sucker punching that guy once the thrall isn't watching. So if we can sneak around over here, for example, Maybe right, right now is my sucker punch. Whack, good, okay, that's what I was looking for. And then we carefully come up over this direction, then we use the clamor net. This guy's gonna be very good at detecting, but it's not gonna save him right now, cause whammo, ha ha! And honestly, at that point, I say we just run and take this thing down. Like, this one thrall is all on his own. What's he gonna do? Oh, poor little baby thrall, Ingrid's coming for you. Enter turn-based mode, like so, bada boom. Okay, so they're gonna run forward. We didn't even have to fire a single shot so far. I'm just gonna go ahead and punch this thing down. Wham, and we'll do that again. Wham, boom. Okay, literally, not one shot fired. Just a couple punches, and uh, a single trap over some oil. Amazing. So, with all that out of the way then, uh, let's explore and find out what the heck's over here. Some special intelligence documents. I'll oh good, this. this is gonna set their efforts back tremendously. Right, so at this point what we're supposed to do is now escape. Um, however, I am still looking- Whoa, there's guys there, I didn't even notice. Hello, ha <laughs> um, We're looking for a stolen artifact? Yeah, I wanna get that thing. So we're not done on this mission yet. Let's look for some bonus objectives. Let's see, these guys have a really long path back this direction. Okay, let's go ahead and grab a brass key. Let's get some lore, the Marteau Method. Yeah, we gotta learn a bit more about that company. Let's grab something here called the Second Wind, which refills all my stealth attacks, which is great. And then I'm gonna see if I can get in here and find a different position or scout at least a little bit. Let's just kinda get behind enemy lines. All right, there's a whole second stronghold we've gotta deal with over here. Oh boy, all right. Well, Latif, you stay put and scout these guys for a little bit while I find another way in for everyone else. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I just noticed something. Hold on. There's a gap in the wall right here. It's very easy to miss, but there's a gap. Hold on, that means we have a back door in. I can get up onto this tower and take out the sentry. Ooh. Yes, that might actually change a few things. Hold the phone. All right, Ingrid, I need you to move forward a little bit, get in position. Eddie, stay where you are. Uh, Latif, let's go ahead and run you in now. We're gonna climb up this ladder. We're gonna take out this guy before anyone has a chance to notice. Sucker punch, no, bye, and then we're gonna get back down. No, you don't. I don't see any reason to get stuck. And then we're gonna run you over here. Because what just happened is I now can move on this area of the map without the person on the tower noticing me. We might be able to get over here and sucker punch this guy too. Which I actually see an opportunity for right now. Barely, hold on, sucker punch. Hold on, move, move, move. No one's actually detected you yet. Just move, just move, just move. Okay, hold on. So now they're gonna start a search party. That's obviously a little dangerous for me. Um, Ingrid, you're fine. Eddie, you might need to move. Let's get you back over here. They've spotted me, hold on. Get around this corner. Actually, better yet, toss trap here. Draw attention to the fire. Boom, there we go, hold on, hold on. Fire spread, fire spread. Now they're burning, yes, yes. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think we actually just took out a lot of enemies at once. This worked, that got a little chaotic, again. But if it works, it freaking works, all right? It's not stupid if it works. Okay, this thrall's getting uncomfortably close. Hold on, and this guy's getting uncomfortably close. Hold on, see if you can sucker punch this guy. 
I would like to. I think I can. Hit him. Yeah, Boom. There we go. Easy. All right. That leaves a thrall? One thrall? Is that all that's left? Nope. There's two thralls. Three thralls. Doesn't matter. Kill him. Four thralls. All right. Fine. Whatever. Um, Hit this guy once. Hit this guy. Boom, boom. All right. Missed. Wow. With a 90% chance to hit and you missed. Downright disgraceful, Eddie. All right. Uh, that's fine. Move Ingrid up into the fray. Thralls are stupid. So I can't imagine it's going to be very difficult for me to take these guys out. We'll go ahead and move forward with Latif. That gets me one evasion counter. Then we'll use running shot to do hopefully a lot of damage. Never mind. It's a 20% chance to hit. Uh, that's not very good. Tell you what, set up Overwatch. If the Thralls wander over that direction, they're going to get shot at, which is about to happen. Boom. There we go. All right, 44 damage is pretty decent. And you're also running forward, but we don't get extra Overwatch charges. You're now burning because you're exactly as stupid as I said you were. Let's focus your fire on the target you're most likely to actually hit. This guy's now marked, which means we do extra damage with range attacks. You need to reload, unfortunately. Ingrid, I don't really feel like there's a lot you're going to be able to do here, so just run into some cover, but don't do anything else. Take an evasion token for yourself. Latif, let's go ahead and shoot this guy. Wow, really? 85% chance? All right, you want to try that one again? There we go. All right. And we'll give the Thrall one last chance to run away. He's stupid and didn't run away. Uh, Eddie, would you like to do the honors? Go ahead and just shoot him. Boom. Thank you. Area clear. Nice! Hey, that actually worked. And it goes to show that if you actually explore the map and look for other ways to deal with the problem, like finding a back door, then you actually can have some great success. Beautiful. All right, I think this is the artifact that I'm looking for. Let's pick this sucker up. A stolen artifact. We'll all steal it right back. Yoink! Ooh, also, there are some supplies and stuff on the map. You can find supplies or intel or other resources that you can use for crafting back at the main base. Uh, or currencies of some sort. So it's always worth trying to explore the map when you cleared out an area. See if there's anything you missed. Looks like the way out is going to be through this heavy door. We already have the brass key, so that's easy. And there is a second wind here. That makes me feel like we're about to walk into a fight. Oh, good. Oh, there's a third encounter on this map. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Okay, hang on. Um, I've used up all my special abilities. Wait. Ingrid, I think I will try giving it to you. Because there's this sentry guy right here. Which means I'm not going to be able to sneak by and hit anybody from behind. I think my only hope is one really, really good charge. So let's just go ahead and get everyone into a better position. Well, this is what I'm talking about. When there's this many guys together like this. I mean, maybe we can do something cool with Ingrid. Hang on. And hang on, we want to do this attack. Uh, I can only hit three things. Tell you what, hit these three. Boom, boom, and boom. And then enter turn-based mode. And there are five enemies. Reinforcements! The banished court has called for reinforcements. Keep an eye out for troop transport. Special technology lets move troops across the wor world. They have teleporters! Oh, good! Good, 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 good. Teleporters, that definitely is fair. All right, all right, all right, all right. So I still have two action points. I should be able to do some good stuff here. Let's think about how I want to do this. Um, Eddie, first off, if you want to do this attack right here, we should be able to knock down and do a lot of damage to a bunch of folks. So let's just go ahead and lay down some serious firepower. Okay, they're also marked, which makes it easier to deal with them anyway. Uh, we can then do light them up, which can hit up to four targets. And also knock them out of cover, which makes it even easier for Latif to then follow up with some hits. Hold on. Can you take out this big guy here? And then, hold on, what about Ingrid? Can you take any of these guys out in two hits? No. All right, so the next thing to do then, Latif, can you hit one of these guys like this one right here? That's fine. Boom. All right. So Ingrid then can run forward, punch this guy. Boom. Then get an action point back. Run forward. Um, I was hoping... No, wait. Ah. Okay, I was hoping I'd be able to run forward and hit you. I still can. Hold on. Wham. Good. All right. And then we have one more action point. We can run forward and take you down. That leaves one enemy left. Oh, there we go. Hold on. That actually worked. We used their respective abilities. 
to really lay, lay down some serious covering fire and set up for everyone else to do some great damage. All right, the teleporter's almost done. I don't know how we shut that down. If we shut that down, maybe just by defeating all enemies, it's over. Doesn't look like it's over. Maybe we can just go ahead and run forward into some cover or something and get ready to deal with them. I don't know how many turns it's going to be before they arrive. But I guess we need to get up over here and be ready to deal with them, huh? Okay, looks like next turn they're going to arrive. And we can try running forward over here, I guess. And then, yeah, we'll set up some overwatch in the same approximate area. So depending on where they go, they'll take a lot of damage. All right, so they're alerted, and they did absolutely nothing. The overwatch was pointless. Well, thanks for that. <laughs> All right, let's knock you out of cover, knock you out of cover. Ingrid, can you run forward and kill this person? The answer is yes. Bam. And then we will do the same stuff over here we usually do. Take you down. Before I actually do my last action point with Ingrid on Latif, let's see if we can take a shot at you. Nope, never mind. Hang on. Let's try moving forward. Get a little bit closer in range, then take a shot at you. Ah, okay. There we go. That worked, sort of. It's not what I expected, but it worked. And then let's get Ingrid back into some cover over here, because this guy's going to come charging after us. I think we might be far enough away he can't do anything. Not so fast. Nope, he can. All right, he's going to take a shot at me. That's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Ingrid can handle it. She's tough, all right? She's really tough. Would you mind finishing him off? Perfect. Area clear once again. All right, well, nothing else we can find here. Let's go ahead and exit, and that completes a mission in the Lamplighters League. Victory is mine. We get some intel. We get some skill points. We get some aether, which I can use for crafting. Perfect. Now, skill points are one of the primary ways that you can level up your characters and give them additional abilities. They are shared across all characters. So if you want to toss every skill point you've got into, let's say, just Latif, you can totally do that. Probably not the most advisable decision, but you could. Also, we will reveal more cards from the Undrawn Hand. Do you remember that blank deck of playing cards we found in the first video? Yeah, these are going to be the special cards here from the Undrawn Hand, and they give buffs to your characters. In this case, the Monument, a debuff ability, inflict two stress on surrounding enemies. Cool. Um, let's attach that onto Latif then. So now he's got a special ability on top of all these other existing cards, which can kind of customize your characters in different ways with random power-ups. So, we managed to take this out. Marteau's threat has been reduced. We did complete our search over here. We found Madame May, a fortune teller who's very interested in the Undrawn Hand itself. Probably one of the greatest living experts on the Undrawn Hand. Well, that means she's going to be interesting. We've probably unlocked a new mission in order to retrieve a new companion. And the court gets their activity now. Because we did not complete this, the threat goes up for Strum. Right, okay, well, let's take our spoils and at least look for ways we can boost up our teams. I'm going to go to my agents over here, and let's take a look at some skills. So I've already unlocked a few things for Ingrid, but you can see that any additional upgrades are going to acquire four of these skill points for herself. I can boost up some of these attacks, so my stick and move is a little bit more powerful and has a knockdown on crit. I can make it so that she takes additional stress before she cracks under the pressure. I can make her killer instinct even better so it can activate three times in a round instead of only twice, right? Lots of ways you can upgrade her character that way. Same thing is true here with Latif. Same thing is true with Eddie. Same thing is true with Celestine, who you have not seen yet. I'm going to boost up Latif's running shot ability and save two points for myself. Okay, with that taken care of, let's this take a look at our allies. So this guy right over here is able to start crafting some additional weapons or equipment for my characters using the Aether that I found earlier. So let's see, a Vitality Engine. Upon using a buff, we get an extra action point. Okay, consumables, that could be useful. Melee attacks gain a 33% chance to reduce cooldowns. That could definitely be very useful for someone like Ingrid and Celestine. All right, and then there's also hidden compartments increase the number of consumables they can equip. Sure, I'm going to go ahead and craft one of those. Really? And then we also have transmutive tempering. Melee attacks that are critical hits will shred five armor. Interesting. Let's go ahead and take the hidden compartments, get that unlocked. Then we're going to go to our supplier over here where we can actually buy a lot of those consumables. Or, in some cases, we can spend our supplies to, let's say, buy some armor. Or maybe buy a weapons mod that will boost up one of our characters. Actually, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and buy one of those weapons mods. Then we'll pop back over here. I'm going to go to, uh, let's say, Latif. And let's go ahead and give him a 10% extra chance to hit with his gun. And then, Ingrid, can I give you the weapon? Yes, I can. You're going to go ahead and wear that and get some extra chance of reducing your cooldown on melee attacks. 
And this is where we jump back over to the world map, where you can see that all three factions are now making their move. The question is, which missions do we need to take down in order to prevent anyone from getting too powerful? Maybe we've got time for one more over here. There's a few different missions that could work here. Do I want to keep Marteau down? Do I want to strike weakening Strum? Or would I rather Nicostro not gain any particular power? Ooh, I think I'm gonna go for the hard mission here. This is another theft. So recover a stolen Magdalite cache. Hmm, okay. In that case, let's go ahead and bring along Ingrid, we'll bring along Latif, and we'll bring along Celestine, and I'll leave Eddie behind for a different operation. Technically, two thieves on the same mission is probably not great. You should really have a saboteur like Eddie, but eh, I'll go with it anyway. Now, this is a very different environment from what we had last time. Okay, we seem to be entering some sort of ruins in the forest or something, or maybe just an outpost of some sort. And I've already spotted our first baddie over here. Okay, um... And this gives me a quick little look. There's a weird beast I've never seen before over here. Okay, that's scary. What the heck are you? Tide spawn. Fallen creatures of devouring king. Yikes. Interestingly, I see a similar scenario to what we had last time. That's another oil barrel and some explosives nearby. We could try the same trick again, unless there's something smarter around here. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. This thing came really close to Latif. Don't move. A muscle. Oh, crap. I also see a reinforcement portal over here, too. Oh, boy. All right, that complicates things a little bit. I suppose one thing I could do is try to just stay as far away from the main group as possible. Because if I want to do, let's say, some quick little takedowns, they'll go on alert and start searching. And as long as they can't find me, eventually they'll calm down. So Latif, for example, could try running in here and just sneak attack a few folks. So, like, I feel like clonking this guy on the head right here. Yoink. No one's gonna see that. But as soon as this is discovered, which will be soon, they're gonna start hunting. Yep, that's what's happening right now. So, they're upset. Eventually, this will go away, and they'll be like, perhaps it was just the wind. But it's gonna be a while. Look how far they go away from their normal pathing when they're searching. It's actually kind of scary, frankly. Sometimes that disruption is useful. It gets them off the main path so that you can actually, like, run in here and do something to someone who otherwise might have been impossible to reach. Oh my gosh, this person was running right to my previous hiding spot. Oh, frick you. And they search for a long time, too. Like, these guys do not just, like, give up within five seconds. Oh, frick me. Oh, frick me. All right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sucker punch! Ugh, there we go. All right, that's three enemies down. Latif's done. Uh, Celestine, you're up. Alternatively, we just go ahead and start moving people forward with the expectation we attack. I might actually want to save, let's say, Celestine's uh, sneak attacks here for the next round of enemies. So instead, let's actually try moving forward with Ingrid. Maybe I can knock a couple of folks out from the fight immediately up over this direction. Well, let's just go ahead and charge into the fray then. Yoink! Bye! And we're gonna try to run away just so I can reposition as needed, though that's probably gonna draw a lot of attention. Then maybe I deliberately draw attention over here. Go to turn base mode. Hold on. Hey, Latif, would you mind shooting that explosive crate here? Boom! Thank you! All right. So they're calling for reinforcements. We knew that was gonna happen, but now I have fire everywhere. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and punch this thing while it's down without walking into the fire ourselves. That actually reduced cooldown a little bit. I think it's gonna burn to death, so we should be okay. Um, didn't get an action point back though, so I kind of regret that a little bit. Nope, now I'm burning. Okay, slight mistake. Um, this thing's dead now though. That's, that's good. And we seem to be spreading the fire everywhere I walk. Well, that's hilarious. We probably should like put out the fire, right? We didn't start the fire? I, I definitely started the fire, I'm sorry. And then we need to get up over here because the reinforcements are going to arrive soon and I want to be in position. And here they come. Okay, that's fine. Um, hmm. This guy somehow managed to avoid burning to death. Good for you. Um, Alright, let's, let's have you run. I can't get into position to actually attack anything this turn. So you're just going to have to get behind a little bit of cover and stay away from the fire for a minute. Let's use an evasion token here. Latif, can you please finish this fool off so we don't get flanked? Thank you. And do a bit of reload action, and then Celestine. Now might be a good time to use one of our special powers. Celestine, you see, is an assassin, but she happens to be a very occulty assassin. She has special magic powers, like mesmerizing an enemy. Hi, you. For the next turn, I'd like you to be on my side. Go kill your brothers. Okay, so we've used up all of our attacks. This guy's now going to shoot his buddy. 
And then this guy's cursed, so he actually takes some extra stress. They usually like to fight each other a little bit, but it looks like this time they decided to go after me instead, which is a little annoying. Okay, Latif is dangerously close to the fire here. We're gonna go ahead and run forward over here to get an evasion token. Then we're gonna use running shot to do extra damage. Boom, and then I also get another movement token so I can reposition behind cover and not take damage. Gosh, Latif is so fun. And then Celestine can finish him off with her dagger, yoink. All right, area clear. So about that cash thing, yoink. Now, if this is anything like most other missions, there's probably going to be at least, yeah, there we go, one more group of baddies. Found him. And a settlement full of extra guys blocking my exit. We might be able to sneak past all of them, to be honest. Because this guy right here has the key. Yeah, if I can take you down safely, we can just grab the key and run for it. Of course, we may need to let them just kind of get it out of their system as they investigate whoever took down their fellow. So, that's fine. I can be patient. I suppose I could also go exploring for any more goodies. Well, hello, another second wind. Ah, dang it. Fortunately, this guy is far enough away from his fellows that we can just take him down and no one even knows we were here. Okay. So really, how easy would it be just to sneak by right now? Just use the tall brush. Does require the key, but we've got that key. So that's fine. We'll open this and make a beeline through here, and there we go. Hey, we avoided a lot of unnecessary fighting. Very stealthy. Cool, that gets me six more skill points I can use to upgrade my characters. I know you didn't get to see a lot of Celestine in action this particular video. That ended up being a lot more stealthy than I was expecting, but she's pretty fun from an occulty perspective, and the mind control trick is really strong in the right moments. But don't worry, I've got another video coming out in just a few days. I'll pull Celestine out of the box, and I'll give her her proper time in the spotlight. But in the meantime, that's good enough for this video. Thanks again to Paradox for the sponsorship. I'm having a lot of fun with this game, and of course, I would encourage you guys to click on the link in the description down below if you guys want to learn more about the Lamplighters League. Otherwise, please consider hitting that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.